folks, it's Jeff here. Just a quick reminder, if you're loving Disney Coast to Coast, there are a couple of easy ways that you can support the show. We'd love it if you could rate and review us on iTunes or wherever you listen to the show. This is a simple way to help other Disney fans find us. Also, go ahead and share your favorite episodes on social media and be sure to tag us. You can find all of our social media information at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. And finally, I just want to say thank you to all of you who listen every week. Your support is very appreciated, and we love that you're enjoying our Disney geekiness. Now on with the show. Is your magic meter running low? Well, we've got a cure for you. Welcome to Disney Coast to Coast. Hey folks, and welcome to Disney Coast to Coast, the ultimate unofficial Disney fan podcast. I'm Jeff DePauly, and in today's House of Mouse headlines, a surprise closing of a Disneyland Resort attraction, a bunch of Marvel theme park news, and more. So let's get to it. Hear the latest news from the Walt Disney Company in today's House of Mouse headlines. So the big news that came out this week is that Disney California Adventure has announced plans for their Marvel expansion. Now, we all knew that Marvel was headed to the Disneyland Resort. Of course, we already have Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout over at DCA. but uh, And they announced some other stuff was going to be opening at the D23 Expo. But now we have some more information. It's going to start opening in phases starting in 2020. And the characters that they're going to be bringing are Spider-Man and the Avengers. Of course, we got that little Avengers clue in the queue for... Guardians of the Galaxy, which was a nice little touch. But the thing that we didn't really know, although it had been rumored for a long time, is that Bugs Land is closing to make way for this expansion. This is not really shocking news, but the thing that surprised a lot of people was that out of nowhere, on March 19th, we had the last day of It's Tough to Be a Bug at Disney California Adventure. Luckily, this attraction that I personally love is still alive and well over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, but it is gone now over at Disney California Adventure, and there was no warning about this. Now, luckily for me, I just happened to be there just two days before it's closing, and I just happened to be walking by it and said, you know what, let's go check it out, because that theater so often is used for previews, so tough to be a bug is often down, and then we'll come back, that I said, it's open, let's go check it out. So I did get to say one last goodbye to It's Tough to Be a Bug at Disney California Adventure, although I didn't really know I was saying goodbye to it, so I'm kind of sad to see it leave. Now, for me personally, if you're not familiar familiar with the layout of Bugs Land at Disney California Adventure, It's Tough to Be a Bug was actually an opening day attraction, which I didn't know. I recently found out, thanks to my friend Preston. And the rest of Bugs Land came later on. So It's Tough to Be a Bug is kind of in a separate area. You have to go to It's Tough to Be a Bug, then, ju- then walk through a giant cereal box to get to the rest of the land. So it is very separate. To me personally, I feel like It's Tough to Be a Bug could have stayed. I think it's a good enough attraction to stay. It has a phenomenal animatronic in it. I love the Hopper animatronic. I wish it would stick around, but it's not going to, unfortunately. Especially since, and you you can say to yourself, well, does it really make sense for it to stay around? Personally, for me, I think anything in Disney California Adventure at this point makes sense. Because there is no theme. In my opinion, it's no longer a theme park. The only thing California about Disney California Adventure is the fact that the theme park is in California, I think it would make a lot of sense for them to kind of let us know what their direction is for Disney California Adventure. It's It's got to get a name change at some point, I would assume, right? So I wish they would tell the, the public what this was going to be. What's the new name change going to be? What's the theme going to be? Is it just going to be a bunch of different IPs? If that's what it is, I feel like that would make this transition easier for people as opposed to not really knowing what's going on and just throwing a bunch of stuff in there at this point. So in any case, the rest of A Bug's Land will be closing in late 2018. Of course, Heimlich's Choo Choo Train is a very popular attraction, although I personally have never become obsessed with it the way that a lot of people have. A lot of people are sad to be seeing this one going. So Heimlich's Choo Choo Train, check it out if you haven't yet. And if you do love it, ride it as many times as you can before it closes later this year. And of course, Flix Flyers, as we've seen in some concept art, may be heading over to uh, over to Pixar Pier, but with a new Inside Out theme to it. So lots of changes coming to Disney California Adventure. The Marvel stuff we'll start seeing in 2020, but the effects have started taking place already for this new DCA Marvel expansion. 
Speaking of Marvel, over in Paris at the Walt Disney Studios Park, we have the Marvel Summer of Superheroes coming up, and they have a few different shows as part of this. The big show is called Marvel Superheroes United, and in this show, Captain America and Iron Man battle each other, and they're later joined by Spider-Man and Black Widow to bring down the villain Thanos. Now, this is sounds like a really cool show. They're also having flashbacks to kind of remind us how these characters got their superhero powers, but it's going to be an indoor show they're going to have indoor drones as part of this show and apparently some really high-tech special effects so marvel superheroes united is definitely the big show as part of the summer of superheroes Another show is called Stark Expo Presents Energy for Tomorrow. Watches the Avengers, including Black Widow and Thor, clash against Asgard's evil prince Loki. Not really much of a description there. They also mentioned they're getting Guardians of the Galaxy Awesome Dance Off, which of course we have over at Disney California Adventure already, right next to Mission Breakout. But in this, you team up with Star-Lord and Gamora and strut your stuff to classic 70s and 80s tunes blasted out of Peter Quill's boombox. And this is all happening June 20th through September 30th at the Walt Disney Studios Park at the Disneyland Resort in Paris. In more overseas park news, we have the Carnival of the Stars coming to Hong Kong Disneyland. This has several different parts to it as well. There is a nighttime show for Main Street USA called We Love Mickey. And this is happening over on Main Street USA because of the castle constructions that's happening over in Hong Kong Disneyland. They're getting a major castle expansion as we've talked about previously on this show. But since that's happening, they can't really do a show over there. So they're moving it to Main Street USA. I am kind of curious how this is going to affect the crowds, I know uh, w over at Disneyland at least, when there's something happening on Main Street USA, it's a very popular place. So it becomes a crowd bottleneck issue. So I'm curious how that's going to affect this over at Hong Kong Disneyland. But yeah, it is a nighttime show. They're going to be used projection on the buildings like we've seen here at Disneyland on Main Street USA. And uh, Minnie Mouse is throwing a surprise party for Mickey. Eventually, Mickey shows up. And yeah, it sounds like a pretty cool party. There's also the Disney Friends Springtime Processional happening there. This is going to feature 30 Disney characters and 50 dancers. It's a cavalcade going through the park, traveling on a float that looks like a giant train. And a more permanent part of the park that's happening is Moana, a homecoming celebration. Now, this is simply the story of the movie that we've seen in Moana, and it's opening this May in a new Adventureland theater over at Hong Kong Disneyland. Now, the controversial changes that came to Pirates of the Caribbean have finally opened at Walt Disney World. As you've probably heard already, there was a big scene change to the auction scene. They've changed it from auctioning off women to auctioning off stolen goods. And I've already shared my opinions on this. I, I don't really feel it was necessary. Pirates are bad people. That's who they are. If we're going to have the argument of you shouldn't auction off women, I'd also say you shouldn't shoot people, but that's a much longer conversation that I've had previously on the show, so I won't really get into it. But I do want to say, I think it's it kind of offends me when the company starts using Walt's quotes to defend their changes. They they like to bring up this this quote, keep moving forward, as Walt said. And to me, that's when Walt was talking about plussing stuff, right? And to me, this isn't really a plus. It's good. I've seen the scene. I like it. It's nice. I don't think it's any better or worse than what was already there. It's got some nice animatronics. I'll give it that. I am sad to see the original auctioneer voiceover gone now because that is so classic to Pirates of the Caribbean as well as some of the dialogue that's been erased from the attraction now. I do like that they gave the redhead a name. Her name is Red, R-E-D-D. -D. I thought that was kind of cute and clever. But... Honestly, I just, I don't really feel like this was a needed change. Of course, we're getting this to the Disneyland Resort as well, but that attraction has seen so many changes through the years. Like, at this point, the argument of, you know, you're changing the original, I mean, it hasn't been original for a long time, I would say. Of course, there's been the addition of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies into the attraction, but also before that, there were more scene changes for political correctness, I guess. But I don't know. I just think it's a losing battle if you're trying to make Pirates of the Caribbean a politically correct ride. Now, of course, this upcoming Sunday is Easter. I love Easter. I think I love Easter way more than the average person. I don't know why exactly. But, well, I actually do know why. I loved growing up and watching the Walt Disney World Happy Easter Parade on television. That was a really, really big deal for me. Sadly, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and sadly, we don't really do a huge celebration of Easter here at the Disneyland Resort ever since they got rid of the Big Thunder Ranch there. 
they used to have a big, you know, lots of different Disney bunnies would be there. And we do a little bit, but not a ton. It's still a bigger celebration over at Walt Disney World, although certainly not as big as it once was. But in any case, at this point, you can meet the Easter Bunny over in Town Square. And then on March 31st and April 1st, they will be having their traditional pre-parade featuring Mr. and Mrs. Easter Bunny, Daisy Duck, Thumper and Miss Bunny, Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, White Rabbit, Clara Cluck, and more characters, as well as the Azalea Trailmaids from Alabama. I gotta be honest, I had never watched video of this pre-parade until recently, and it's much bigger than I expected. They have the traditional Easter Parade song as part of this, which, I don't know, it gives me the feels. I love that song. And it's it's a, a couple floats and quite a few performers as part of this, so it's much more than just a one float or one car driving down the street pre-parade. It's a really nice thing they do for Easter. So that's happening March 31st and April 1st, which of course is Easter day. And also for Easter, we have the egg extravaganza scavenger hunt happening over at Epcot for $5.95. Now this is a lot of fun. I've never done it at Epcot specifically, but I've done it at the Disneyland Resort, uh, Disneyland and Disney California Adventure, and they do it at Downtown Disney as well. They The prize that you get, you're essentially paying $5.95. You're getting a map with stickers to place on the map whenever you find the eggs hidden around the park. And then as your prize, you get a little plastic egg. Now, I will give you a word of warning about this. As I said, I have done this a couple of times. I really enjoy it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's harder than you would think. It's not really just for kids. I've done this with a group of adults, and we actually had a hard time finding some of the eggs, but it's a lot of fun. The thing I will say is this, and I think that this is completely ridiculous. I hope it changes for this year, but last Easter, I went to Disneyland Resort on Easter Day, had breakfast at Goofy's Kitchen, and then the plan was to go on the Easter egg hunt after that. Well, We went there right when the park opened, and they were completely sold out of the maps and stickers and eggs and everything, which I was like, it's Easter Day. You didn't reserve a certain amount for Easter Day, and they were like, nope, we sold out of them earlier this week, so there are none. So if you want to do this Easter egg hunt on Easter Day, if there's any way possible, I highly suggest that you buy your map earlier in the week or earlier in the month and just hold on to it until later. You can still get your prize even if you don't finish the map. So just pick the plastic egg that you want when you buy your map. That's usually what they do anyway, just to have to not deal with it later. So yeah, if it's a cool thing to do on Easter day. Just know that if you're going to the park and expecting to buy a map that day, if it's like previous years, they will most likely be sold out and gone. I don't know if it's different over at Epcot, but I know at the Disneyland Resort, that has been an issue the last couple of years. Now in some movie news, we did get some news that a Lady and the Tramp live action film is in the works. This will not be going to theaters though. This will be one of the first films headed to the Disney streaming service. Uh, That's kind of a surprise to me. It sounds like a bigger movie to me, but uh, they're investing a lot of money into creating original content for the streaming service, it sounds like. So this will be, I guess the earliest would be fall 2019 that we'll be seeing this since that's when the streaming service is set to launch. This of course will be a mix of live action and CG characters as well. So Lady and the Tramp, live action, added to the list of live action Disney movies. Some more movie news, we did get a production start date for Indiana Jones 5. Steven Spielberg mentioned that in April 2019, they will begin production on Indiana Jones 5, which at that point, Harrison Ford will be 76 years old. So we're going to be seeing a 76-year-old Indiana Jones. I don't know how old the the character is supposed to be, to be honest. I'd be kind of interested to find that out. I have no idea in the timeline of the Indiana Jones films. But the film is set to be released in July 20th of 2020. And we have been told by the Walt Disney Company that this will not be the last Indiana Jones film. My guess is it will be the last one for Harrison Ford and quite possibly for Steven Spielberg to direct as well. But we'll be seeing more Indiana Jones films. Me personally, even though it's overkill and he's in everything, I really think Chris Pratt would make an awesome Indiana Jones. But whoever it is, I'm excited to see this franchise live on. My guess is they'll start doing, you know, some prequels and stuff so that it makes more sense in the timeline of the age of the character. But I like Indiana Jones. It's fun. And hopefully uh, John Williams will be coming back to score the final Spielberg Harrison Ford Indiana Jones film. I believe he will be. And before we get going here, I just want to give a big congratulations to everybody involved with Frozen, the Broadway musical, which has now officially opened on Broadway. It's been in previews for a while. We had been getting those songs leading up to the new uh, opening night of the show. And 
and congratulations to everybody. Uh, it looks like you'll probably be getting a nice long run on Broadway and then, of course, a successful tour after that. I do want to remind all of you that this upcoming week will be the final week where you can order your Disney Coast to Coast Newsies hat. If you haven't done that yet, head over to DisneyCoastToCoast.com. Get yourself a Newsies hat. Of course, I'm a huge Newsies fan. I love this product. So go check it out at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. And if you want to place your order, make sure you do it this week because they will not be available after that. For the Twitter poll this week, I said, with the announcement of A Bug's Land closing at Disney California Adventure, do you think they should have at least kept It's Tough to Be a Bug in the Park? As I previously mentioned, I think they should have. I wish they did, but they didn't. And most of you would disagree with me. 63% of you said no, 37% said yes. So it looks like most of you got your wish. Most of you, I guess, don't care too much about that attraction. As I said, I think it's a great attraction. I do think it has a better home over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, so I hope that it lives on there. And I feel like they've, at least the DCA version, they had done a really good job keeping it up to date and keeping it, you know, running smoothly. The animatronic always looked great. The projection was upgraded throughout the years, so I love the attraction, but it's gone. Thanks for joining us this week, folks. I want to remind you to make sure you're following us on Instagram so that you can play the Daily Disney Decision live every single day on Instagram, as well as on Twitter. Our username is DisneyCTC. It's D-I-Z-N-E-Y-C-T-C. Everything else you need is over at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. Check everything out there. This episode of Disney Coast to Coast was produced by Philip Elke, who has supported the show through Patreon. If you'd like to become a DCTC producer or gain other rewards, like the upcoming movie live stream we have going on, make sure you you go to patreon.com slash DCTC to check that out, or you can find more info at DisneyCoastToCoast.com. For now, that's going to be it. Have a magical day, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching Disney Coast to Coast. Have a magical day. <laughs> Disney Coast to Coast is produced and hosted by Jeff DePauly. Learn more about the podcast and become a supporter at DisneyCoastToCoast.com.